It's a really tough career, but somehow I've been lucky. I've managed to sort of bumble my way through, be at the right place at the right time, and um, you just question things. For a man who says he's a bumbler, consider this. Biochemistry PhD, Adelaide. Chair of Molecular Therapy, Murdoch. Perrin Institute for Neurological and Translational Science, Director. At this point, Professor Steve Wilton will opt for self-deprecation. I'd say I was a solid student. I wasn't exceptionally brilliant or anything like that, but it was just sort of um, dogged and you just, you'd get through. It's, it, it, nothing came easy, you had to work for it. Steve Wilton's hard work is inseparable from the human gene. So it's as well to know what a gene is, what it does, and some of the language that describes it. Genes are bits of DNA made up of sections called exons. Exons are interconnected by non-functional blocks of DNA called introns. Genes use information in the exons to produce proteins that are vital to the body's functions. And of course, exons don't always do the right thing. Case in point, Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Duchenne is an incredibly cruel disease. Um, I don't know, before I joined the Institute, I didn't know anyone that had this disease. Um, I got involved in it because I was trying to find the spelling errors in the gene. With Duchenne sufferers, an exon contains a mutation that stops production of the protein dystrophin. Without dystrophin, muscles become fragile and don't function properly. Typically, this affects young boys. In November 1996, the game changed. Steve Wilton was at a medical conference in Nevada. And this other guy was talking about a blood disease. And I suddenly realised that what he was doing to this blood disease, I might better do to muscular dystrophy. So that's where it all started. Absolutely a eureka moment. I, re I still remember it now. I was, I was fidgeting in my seat. I was squirming. Um, and as soon as uh, the talk was over, I went and spoke to this guy, just chatted with him. He, th he thought, yeah, maybe he could do something. And um, I, I shudder when I think about how naive we were at the time. We sort of only chose a couple of compounds. One of them worked, one of them didn't. If both of them didn't work, I probably wouldn't be here. Lake Tahoe was 20 years ago. Steve Wilton's challenge was to remove the faulty exon containing the mutation. This would allow some dystrophin to be produced. The process is called exon skipping. We'd work very closely with the Muscular City Foundation. They were supporting our research and in return we would go out and we'd talk to the community and sort of showing what we could do. So you get to meet the kids and you see the kids young and they're still walking and then they get a bit older and then they stop walking. Um, it's, it's very sobering. Uh, and we actually encouraged uh, a very close interaction between uh, the kids with muscular dystrophy and the lab. So we'd have um, boys with muscular dystrophy coming into the, in their wheelchairs, coming into the lab to, to do data entry. So they'd get, to not play in the lab, but they would be sitting around, surrounded by you know, pretty girls and, and so on and interacting. And the team would actually see why they're doing the work. They'd see who was hopefully going to eventually benefit from this type of uh, uh, the research we were doing. So it was a two-way motivation. Billy from Pittsburgh is a Duchenne sufferer. He and Steve are friends. Billy's an interesting character. Um, I'd met his mum uh, a number of years ago at, a, at conferences in the States. And um, Billy was, I suppose, lucky enough to have one of the more common mutations that would respond to the first drug that we uh, developed for muscular dystrophy. Now, with Duchenne, 
this is a relentlessly progressive muscle wasting condition. You don't get better. And the, the kids that be a bit clumsy to start with and then they get weaker and weaker. Uh, it became more pronounced from seven, eight years of age and then they'd go into a gradual decline until, you know, typically before the age of 12, they'd be in a wheelchair. Billy got onto the treatment, I think he was nine or 10 years old um, when he started the trial. Um, so he was close to losing the ability to walk. And, and then we started to get uh, videos of him doing things. And there was uh, one that I've shown a number of times of him walking down a path, um, yelling out, I'm over here. And what his parents told us is that 18 months beforehand, he could not walk down that path. I'm over here! He's, he's the poster kid. And the work continued. Steve Wilton and his colleagues pioneered a radical new therapy. A drug developed at the Perrin Institute is being trialled in the United States and the results are positive. September the 19th, 2016 was a watershed. The Food and Drug Administration gave accelerated approval to the compound. The first dystrophin restoring drug of its type ever approved by the FDA. Perhaps it's unsurprising that such a success should come to the Perrin Institute, where Steve Wilson is director. The thing that really um, impressed me about this place was the fact that there was such a close interaction between the clinicians and the bench researchers like myself. So it's, it's double bang for your buck. And these aren't the, the average clinics. I mean, these are the specialist clinics. So we're looking at the really top clinicians in Perth. It's been a, a long struggle. Um, I did find one of my old NHMRC rejection slips um, saying they wanted more preliminary data and they failed to see the significance of the work. What I'm hoping is this is going to become a new type of genetic antibiotic. It's a, a new generation of uh, treatments for inherited diseases. So um, if we can pull this off, if we can um, convince people that this is a, uh, a viable treatment, everything from sort of rare inherited diseases to model sclerosis to possibly stroke, um, diabetes, there's a lot of conditions out there where you manipulate the gene expression the right way at the right time, you can get over some, some horrible conditions. The ultimate dream of any medical researcher is to make a difference. Congratulations.